So, today is the, the session for solving problem and maybe next session also will be on problem solving and maybe next to next section will also be on problem solving. So, I start with uh, a problem which is based on uh, this uh, book by Kleppner and Kolonko and this particular problem is based on question number 4.13 of Kleppner and it says that the potential of a particle of mass m by 2 is given by u equal to epsilon then r naught by r to the power 12 minus 2 r naught by r to the power 6. The questions are a sketch the function. The second part is find the equilibrium separation, find the equilibrium separation of the particle. from the origin. And the third part is find the frequency of small oscillations about the equilibrium point. So, it is based on it is not 4.13 of that book it is based on that. Okay. Essentially, it is a one dimensional problem you are talking of equilibrium position you are talking of uh, frequency of oscillation about that equilibrium position. So, it is essentially a one dimensional problem and you may be wondering why m by 2 why not m so, that will become clear after few lectures. So, sketch the function sketch this function. So, I have to write r and this uh, u and how do I sketch the first thing is that uh, are there points where this u is 0. So, I want to know whether this curve cuts this r axis or not uh, or, and if it cuts then at uh, which points. So, to sketch let us do all those exercise if u is equal to 0. If u is equal to 0 that means r naught by r to the power 12 is equal to 2 times r naught by r to the power 6. So, if I take the sixth root it is r naught by r to the power 2 is equal to 2 to the power 1 by 6 and then uh, here r naught by r right. I am taking sixth root the whole thing to the power 1 by 6 here. So, that will make it 2 and 1 by 6 this will be 1 and this will be 2 to the power 1 by 6 and that means r naught by r is equal to 2 to the power 1 by 6. So, r is equal to r naught divided by 2 to the power 1 by 6. So, you get only one value you get only one value of r where u is 0 and uh, that value is slightly less than r naught because 2 to the power 1 by 6 will be more than 1 
So, you are dividing by a quantity which is more than 1. So, this will be smaller than this. So, on this graph, if I, I need more space. So, suppose this is my r here, this is u here and this point is r naught and this r which makes u equal to 0 is somewhat less. So, suppose it is here. That is one. It will cross this r axis only at one point. Now, what happens if r is very small? If r is very small, so this is u. If r is very small, you have 1 by r which is very large to the power 12. And here you have 1 by r to the power 6. This is also very large, but this thing is the square of this. 1 by r to the power 6 is also very large, but then square it, it will become a very much larger and this will be this factor. That means for very small r, this will be much larger than this and so this whole quantity is positive. Right, and going to infinity. For very small r, this will go to infinity. This is also going to infinity. This is also going to infinity, but uh, this is a much bigger infinity and the whole thing is positive and going to infinity. That means, for very small r, it is coming from here. That is one. Then uh, you have uh, what happens if r is very large. If r going to very large values, this is going to 0, this is also going to 0. So, ultimately it has to go to 0. So, that is another information. And then uh, what you have is, what you have is that uh, where are maxima and minima. So, we have the information that for small r it is, uh, it is very large, for large r it is going to 0. And then uh, in between what happens? For that, let us look for the maximum minimum. So, d u d r. Let us look for d u d r. Now, d u d r, if you differentiate, it will be epsilon here, then 12 times r naught by r to the power 11. Okay? 12 times r naught by r to the power 11. That means, I have differentiated this term with respect to r naught by r. And so, I have to multiply by differentiation of derivative of r naught by r with respect to r, which will be minus r naught by r square. So, it is minus r naught by r square this. So, the first term we have differentiated come to second term minus 2 into the 6 that is 12. So, 12 and then r naught by r to the power 5 right 6 is here. So, 6 will come to this side 2 into 6 will be 12 r naught by r to the power 5 then differentiation of r naught by r with respect to r, which will be once again minus r naught by r square. That is du dr. So, let me write it in a somewhat more manageable fashion. du dr is equal to epsilon and then square bracket. Now, it is 12 here, 12 you can take out if you so wish. So, 12 I can write somewhere here, let us write it somewhere here. Then it is minus r naught to the power 12. So, minus r naught to the power 12 and then r to the power 13, right? r to the power 13. So, divided by r to the power 13. And then uh, here you have plus and 12 we have already taken. So, r naught to the power 6. So, plus r naught to the power 6 and divided by r naught to the power 8. 
r not to the power uh, 6 divided by r to the power 8 divided by r to the power 5 from here and r to the power 2 from here. So, r to the power 7 this is r to the power 7 this is du by dr right. Now, if this is 0 if this is 0 if du dr is 0 that means that means r naught by 12 divided by r power 13 should be equal to r naught 6 here and r to the power 7 here and therefore uh, r naught to the power 6 divided by r to the power 6 should be equal to 1 r should be equal to r naught because I know that uh, in the beginning it is very high and the end it is uh, 0 going to be 0 and there can be only one maximum or minimum. So, that has to be minimum that cannot be a maximum. So, it will decrease it has to go to this uh, point where it crosses this uh, point it becomes negative there then uh, it has to be a minimum here if you if it wants to reach this 0 and that minimum must occur at r equal to r naught and then it will go and then it will gradually approach 0. So, that is the kind of uh, sketch we have so, this is the kind of uh, potential energy function if the particle is uh, is somewhere here the potential energy is positive positive if the particle is here potential energy is 0 if the particle is here then the potential is negative if the particle is here it is maximum negative and then gradually the potential energy again increases right. So, that is a part b part find the equilibrium separation of the particle from the origin. So, equilibrium positions mean the force is 0 it stays there that is the equilibrium position that happens when this potential energy is minimum because force is given by negative of uh, du dr. So, if uh, force is 0 du dr is 0 and therefore, the equilibrium position will be at r equal to r naught. So, this is also done the equilibrium position will be this this will be the answer r equal to r 0 this is that equilibrium position. What does that mean if you put the particle at r equal to r naught ok. If you put the particle at r equal to r naught it will stay there in equilibrium it will not move. So, that is the meaning of this this is essentially one dimensional motion if it is two dimensional motion r equal to r naught means a circle ok. But uh, here it is this equilibrium position the force is is 0. Then the c part find the frequency of small oscillation about the equilibrium position. So, if the particle is here and the energy is, uh, is just this if this is the energy if this is the total energy and total energy is equal to the potential energy total energy is equal to the potential energy then the kinetic energy is 0 and the particle does not move. But if the energy is, is more if the energy is more then the particle can move and we have already discussed these are the turning points these are the turning points this is let us say r 1 and this is r 2 and the particle with this energy it will go from here to here here to here here to here here to here that means from the origin the distance will change and it will stay between r 1 and r 2. So, these are the turning points so this is the kind of motion. But frequency of small oscillations that means the energy is such that you have uh, only you are using only this much. So, your energy is very close to that uh, required for equilibrium. So, somewhere somewhere here so it goes in a oscillation here 
and if it is small then this portion can be approximated to a parabolic curve and then it will be SHM and we will see uh, I have to do some calculations I can perhaps do it here that uh, uh, for small oscillations it can be treated as an SHM and then we can get the frequency from the SHM equations and how do I do that I go for this uh, expansion of u around this point r naught ok. So, u is equal to this is called Taylor Taylor series it says that if you have to get u as a function of r and you have a point r naught very which is very close to it you can write it as u at r naught and plus du dr at r equal to r naught and then multiplied by r minus r naught plus then uh, half of half of second derivative d 2 v dr square evaluated at r equal to r naught and multiplied by r minus r naught square and similarly higher order terms coming in there. And if r is very close to r naught perhaps you would like to neglect this r minus r naught square term in comparison to r, r minus r naught term here. You do have r minus r naught cube terms and fourth power and fifth power. But if this uh, separation is small, if this quantity is small, then you can neglect higher order terms. Now, in our case, in our case, du dr at r equal to r naught is 0. This is r equal to r naught and here du dr is 0 and therefore, this term is not there. And so, I cannot neglect this in comparison to this and so I have to evaluate this we can we can do that uh, u. So, we can do that and uh, it is so uh, d u d r is here. So, let us calculate what is d 2 u d r square equal to 12 epsilon minus r naught to the power 12 r naught to the power 12 and then you have to differentiate r to the power minus 13. So, minus 13 here and then r to the power minus 14. So, r to the power 14 in the denominator right I have written minus I have written r naught to the power 12 which is constant and then I have to differentiate. So, I am differentiating r to the power minus 13. So, minus 13 r to the power minus 14 r to the power minus 14 is written as r to the power 14 in the denominator. Now, come here plus r naught to the power 6. So, this is r naught to the power 6 and then I have to differentiate r to the power minus 7. So, minus 7 here and then r to the power 8 here. So, that is the differentiation. So, let me and it has to be evaluated at r equal to r naught. So, if I write r equal to r naught, so this every r becomes r naught, r equal to r naught. Then what happens? Then it is 12 epsilon, this minus and this minus is plus r to the power 12 divided by r, r naught to the power 12 divided by r naught to the power 14. So, it is r naught to the power 2. So, it is 13 divided by r naught square the first term. The second term is minus here and 7 here and divided by r naught square. So, this is 12 epsilon into 6 divided by r naught square. So, it is 72 epsilon naught epsilon divided by r naught square. 
Now, look at this term u r is equal to u r naught and then plus half of half of this quantity d 2 u d r square at r equal to r naught. So, that is 72 epsilon divided by r naught square and then r minus r naught square compare with u x equal to half k x square. This is our SHM equation. Potential energy of a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion f equal to minus k x. So, that k is here the potential energy is given by half k x square. There we choose 0 of potential energy at x equal to 0. Right, so around that and you know potential energy is always arbitrary to an additive constant. So, it does not matter where I take my potential energy to be 0. So, this is a just a constant shift okay. and then this is the equilibrium position and here it this x is also from equilibrium position. So, separation from the equilibrium position is square separation from the equilibrium position is square same story. And uh, this does not matter, uh, you can take any any point and say that okay, my 0 is here, potential energy 0 is here. So, a DC shift can always be done. So, it is identical to this. This will be an SHM. If this is the equation, this is HM. Of course, this is an approximation because we have neglected the third power, fourth power, and sixth power. But if we if R is close to R naught, we can do that. And so, this motion will be approximately SHM for small change in energy the, the motion will be approximately SHM and what will be the frequency. So, for SHM you know angular frequency square root of k by m. So, the same equation here in our case omega is equal to square root of k. In place of k, I have the 72 epsilon naught by r naught square. So, 72 epsilon naught by r naught square and divided by m and mass of the particle here is m by 2. So, we divide by m by 2. So, I put m here and into 2 here. And 72 into 2 is uh, 144, a perfect square, square root is 12. So, this is 12 times 12 times epsilon naught divided by m r naught square. Okay. So, epsilon naught is uh, in our habit, we have we now, when we do electrodynamics, we write epsilon naught uh, so many times. So, this is the angular frequency and you know the frequency as such is this angular frequency divided by 2 pi. Let me take uh, one more question and this will be proper two dimensional central force motion. And the question is based on uh, 9.2 of our Kleppner Kolonkov book. A particle of mass m, a particle of mass m moves under an attractive central force f of r is equal to minus k r cube. The angular momentum is L. The angular momentum of the particle and obviously about the origin. is L. The maximum distance of the particle 
the maximum distance of the particle from the origin is double the minimum distance and the question is find this minimum distance find this minimum distance okay so force f is f is minus k r q so write what is potential energy u u will be what you have to integrate so k into r to the power 4 divided by 4 this will be the potential energy if you differentiate it with respect to r you get k r cube and put a minus sign you get the force so this is potential energy what is v effective we have used this terminology v effective it is l square by 2 m r square and then the actual potential energy which is plus k r to the power 4 by 4 k r to the power 4 by 4 this is the effective potential energy and if you draw the potential energy how will it look like if this is r and this is v effective and if i draw this if you take very small values of r this is negligible very small value so it is going to 0 very small values this is going to infinity so it comes from infinity all the time it is positive r square here r 4 here all the time it is positive i do not have to find the point where it crosses this uh, r axis and uh, of course i can look at uh, the large r values for large r values this will be 0 but this will go to infinity so it starts from infinity and it goes up to infinity what happens in between so look for the maximum minima v effective and then differentiation of this with respect to r so if you differentiate you have minus l square by m r cube this term will always occur so i remember it and then here when you differentiate it will be plus k r cube if it is zero if it is going to be zero then you get l square by m k l square by m k is equal to r to the power 6 the sixth power of this this is the place this is the place where this will be maximum or minimum and the only one value you get only one value of r so only one maxima or only one minima is possible this is infinity <laughs> this is infinity it is always positive it has to be a minimum so your function will be something of this type something of this type and this will be the minimum now it is said that the uh, maximum distance of the particle from the origin is double the minimum distance so that means the energy is uh, something like this this could be the total energy and here are the turning points this is that minimum distance let us say r naught and then uh, this is another turning point and this will be 2 times r naught okay if this is the total energy then the particle cannot come this side and cannot go that side it has to remain in this so that half m r dot square is always positive it cannot be negative here that uh, r dot is 0 here this uh, r dot is 0 so these are the situations you have to find the value of r naught how do i how do i get that 
at this point and at this point the total energy is same as this effective potential energy that is why that half m r dot is 0 total energy is half m r dot square and plus l square by 2 m r square and plus u of r potential energy yeah, v v or u i do not know what i have written so this is the kinetic energy and this is the potential energy but then we combine these two and write this as v effective so the total energy is your effective potential energy and plus half m r dot square so here that r dot is zero and u is same as the v effective that means v effective here at r naught and that is l square by 2 m r naught square okay at this point what is the effective potential energy at this point minimum distance so r is equal to r naught so i am writing r naught here and then plus the potential energy at r naught which is which is equal to the effective potential energy at this point so effective potential energy at this point is l square divided by 2 m 2 r naught square and then plus effective potential energy i am writing at 2 r naught like this like this so i have written u here so i should have written u here i should have written u here i should have written u here and uh, yeah v effective is fine, fine fine okay so this is u at r so this is a situation i can write l square 2 m r naught square plus u at r naught what is u at r naught k into r naught to the power 4 divided by 4 so k into r naught to the power 4 divided by 4 is equal to l square divided by 2 into 2 is 4 4 into 2 is 8 so 8 m r naught square plus this is k by 4 and then 2 r naught power 4 the potential energy at 2 r naught it is this so this is 16 by 4 is 4 here so i have this l square minus 2 m r naught square this one and minus this one minus l square by 8 m r naught square is equal to this is 16 by 4 is 4 4 k r naught to the power 4 and minus k r naught to the power 4 by 4 all right so easy to calculate l square by 2 m r naught square and then you have 1 minus 1 by uh, 2 i have taken so 1 by 4 correct 1 by 8 here 1 by 2 is here and 1 by 4 is here and this side k r naught to the power 4 and then you have 4 minus 1 by 4 all right so this is 3 by 4 this is 3 by 4 so 3 l square divided by 8 m r naught square and on that side it is 15 by 4 so 15 by 4 times k r naught 4 that gives you let us uh, take this r naught square on this side so this will become r naught to the power 6 r naught to the power 6 equal to and everything rest will be on the other side so this i can make it uh, okay let me write let me write so 3 l square by 8 m 3 l square by 8 m from this side i had taken this r naught square there so it is 3 l square by 8 m and from that side i have to bring this thing so this 15 k will come in the denominator so 15 k here and this 4 will go in numerator so 4 will go here so this will be what 3 and 15 so 5 here 4 and 8 so 2 here so it is l square and divided by 10 km 10 mk 
and therefore r naught is equal to minimum distance is equal to one sixth power of this that means it is l square by 10 m k to the power 1 by 6 and that is the answer 1 by 6 that is the answer l is given to us mass of the particle is m and k is given to us a particle of mass m so that is our minimum distance of the particle from the origin.